The Small Business Show, episode 386 for Wednesday, June 29th, 2022. Folks, and welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are small business ing with our business brains every single week. Sponsors for this episode include Shopify.com slash SBS, where you can go and get your 14-day trial and full access to Shopify's entire suite of features, and I trust. Capital.com, where you can invest in crypto using your IRA, no monthly fees, 25, more than 25 cryptocurrencies available, but doing it in your IRA that we'll talk more in depth about both of these things, because it's pretty amazing uh, what you're able to do with, with both of our sponsors here. So, uh, yeah, so uh, that's what we got for, awesome. for now back here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And back in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. Both those sponsors give me little goosebumps. I know. I like it. That's yeah, good. I, <laughs> I, I like say it, yeah. I say back in Durham, New Hampshire. I was earlier today. I went and had lunch with actually small business show listener Scott uh, yes. and talked about a new podcast that he is adding to his revenue stack. So, um, yeah, it's interesting I stuff. Love, I love the revenue stack. Uh, concept and matter of fact that, that we I think we should do a whole show on the revenue stacks I don't think we've done that in a while oh that's a good idea I'm putting it in yeah. our uh, I'm putting it on our list man that's a good idea it's good yeah it's good yep. today's show is going to be all about finance and stuff and you and I were just having a conversation about the what's the ROI of uh, college tuition we both have kit well, I have one left in college I think you same have one as well yeah and uh, you know <laughs> It, it's it's real very relative, and I'm you know, I think we both agree we're very fortunate to you know help get our kids through school and not where they don't have to have any debt uh, for the most part. Maybe and I'm, I'm, maybe I'm still yeah. trying to decide this. This is why the conversation came up. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And the, I think the ROI is you you it it has to be measured on multi levels, and uh, that that's what I wanted to share on the show. It's like a some businesses have multiple bottom lines, yep. and I think the ROI of college has multiple bottom lines. And, you know, I, I mentioned to you, my son, I think, has gotten more out of just being on his own for the last two years sure. and making decisions and all those kinds of, I'm not there to solve his problems anymore. And he's definitely a different person. Uh, night and day, he's taken on a really tough summer job. Great potential, but all commission, and I don't, he never would have done that before, uh, I don't think. And so I think that multiple bottom line really has to be considered. I, the, I guess. Right? I, yeah, I mean, I think, I think so, it does. I, well, I, yes and no. I, I, yeah. Yes, in that I fully agree that the I, I think of college in part as a halfway house, right? Like, like and this is the yeah. the part I ascribe to what you're talking about, where you know your kid has the opportunity. Our kids have their opportunities to be on their own, but still in a bubble, right? You know, college isn't entirely on your own. You do have people there, especially if you're living in a dorm, to help guide you from doing the worst, to, from making the worst decisions, right? And hopefully you start to learn to make better and better decisions and doing all those things. So, but but your parents aren't there. And so I, that's yes. why I call it this halfway house. And there is huge value in that. I, I totally agree. Yeah. There's a bottom line there, but there is arguably... Very little difference in the value of the bottom line, uh, the 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 halfway house version of the bottom line, at a school that costs twenty grand a year yeah. versus yeah. a school yes. that costs eighty grand a year, right? And totally argu agree. arguably, there's very little difference in the actual education at a school that's twenty grand a year versus eighty. There there might be a measurable difference, but I don't think it's four x. Right. But, no, I but, don't think so. But then there's the, the third bottom line. Um, and, I'll, and I want to talk more about the second one that I'm glossing over, the actual financial bottom line. But the, the yeah. third bottom line of what other benefits does a particular school bring you? Right. You, connections, uh, you know, into the workplace. Connections. Uh, yeah. You know, or, or just connections. Like that you might get a fraternal type of connections, whether or not your school has fraternities or if it does, whether or not you take advantage of them. But that that idea that, you know, we went through a thing together, we went through college together and it worked out. 
So, yeah. uh, you know, and, and we, we, there's shared crisis and all that stuff. But, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's, um, and I would love to get some other, you know, input on this of, uh, small business owners that, you know, oh, but I, I, I don't want to end this topic though. Because, no, 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 oh, no. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, what I'm just saying, just, you know, send, send us your comments and feedback at business show.co. Cause I would just love to hear that what you decided and how you're managing it. I've had these same discussions, uh, with, both my kids about, well, what are you getting at, getting out of it? And, uh, you know, my daughter went to a significantly more expensive school than my son. And, but, but again, I think you have to cater it to the kid, but it is really important. I think one of the great things you're doing, Dave, is uh, sitting down with your son in this case and really make having that explanation. And that question hit me. And this Uh-oh. Is... It, I just, I lost you for a second, Shannon. Everything all right? Oh, You're back. Yeah, okay. I'm here. I'm yeah, back. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so maybe that, yeah, I hear a little strange noise on my end too. Huh. So maybe we'll see. Um, maybe I got it. Who knows? All right. I hit, hit my microphone. But asking the question to your son, if you had to borrow this money, would you do it? Well, that, and that's the key, right? That when I talk yeah. about that, that, that second bottom line, the financial bottom line, it's how do you capitalize this cost like if in you know with any of my business ventures and even with my like my house like as through my life and you know, we talk about using our business brains all the time right that like, that's yes. that's what we do here is we apply yep. this business brain thinking sometimes to our businesses sometimes to our personal lives right and absolutely i look at okay we're putting in you know we just put in a patio uh, at the house and we spent you know a not uh, a not small amount of money on doing this. We put a hot tub yeah. in and a fire pit and all this stuff, but it's like, okay, a, we're going to get some level of enjoyment out of it. That's why we did the patio now, but all because it, we have this five-year plan, right? And maybe we sell the house in, in 10 years. Maybe we sell it in two years. I don't know, but you know, we've given ourselves this five-year plan. We've been in the house 17 years. There's a bunch of things that we need to do to, to, to make the house attractive to sell, uh, sure. although, although if we were to sell it today, it probably doesn't need to be attractive at all, although that's changing. But, you know, so we made this list and then we prioritize the list by the things that we will enjoy while we're still here versus, you know, we have one bathroom, for example, that we never use. So if we do that bathroom, you know, a week before we put it on the market, that's great. Right? <laughs> we don't care. Yeah, that's right. But the that's patio, right. you know, we did that, but we're still looking at like, okay, what's the investment? What's the return we're going to get on this, both in terms of, you know, actual price for the house, curb appeal, sellability, and then, you know, whatever, for whatever time we will live here with it, enjoyment, right? And so there's all these things. And, and I, I can't help but apply my business brain to college education and looking at there's a huge difference between paying a hundred thousand dollars for a four year degree, you know, a 20 or $25,000 a year school yeah, and, yeah. and 360,000 oh. for a four year degree for an $80,000 a year school. And I, I just have, I have trouble or 320,000, I guess is what that math comes out to. I, I, yeah, multiplied yeah. It. I, I took the 90, not the, uh, not the, not the, the 80, but uh, you know, like it's a lot of money it's and, and I don't see, I, I don't see how I, I, everything I look at with, with my business brain, whether I look at it, whether I'm paying cash or not, I look at how long would it take me to pay this off if I borrowed a hundred percent of the money? Because I am borrowing that money, right? I'm borrowing it. Yeah. If I'm paying cash, I'm borrowing yeah. it from myself and yeah. reducing the amount of cash that I have to spend on something else. And, yes. and that is where it's like, okay, for a hundred K looking at where salaries are and you know, the opportunities that you might get when you graduate. Okay. hundred K great. Makes sense. And, and then adding in, you know, there's the halfway house aspect. There's the, the, you know, the connections and all of that. Okay. Well, okay. This school over here has better connections. Okay. Is that worth an extra 320 or $220,000? No, yeah, no, that's right. not. It's, I, I can already tell you it's not like you're never going to pay that loan off, whether you borrowed it from a bank or borrowed it from yourself, because in theory, the money that you spend, you get back in the end. Right. And so right, right. I, like, I can't do it. I, I, I can't figure it out. And that's the <laughs> I'd love someone to help shed light on this for me, because yes, I, yes. I, I want to I want to at least have the opportunity to see it differently. Feedback at business show dot com. Yeah. 
your business brain looks at it one way. Your parent brain may be looking at it another. And my parent brain wants to look at it another, but my business brain isn't <laughs> letting it. That's that's really the uh, that's yeah. the thing. Oh man, it's a classic dilemma, man. It's very challenging. I've had this conversation with tons of parents last few years because our kids and. You know, my kids went to private school their whole life, high school, private high school, yeah. you know, K through eight, all that stuff. And I was like, wow. You know, when I sit down and think about all the the investment, which I'm very happy we did. But that's it's, it. It's an investment. And there needs to yeah. be a return, an ROI, a return on that investment. Yeah. 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 You know what that sound is? That's the sound of another sale happening on Shopify, our sponsor and the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify is this platform which is designed for any one of us to sell anywhere, giving entrepreneurs like all of us the resources that once were reserved only for big businesses. The great part is we get to customize them for our needs with great-looking online stores that bring our ideas to life and tools to manage our day-to-day and drive sales. Making your idea real opens up endless possibilities and starts you on this journey that is the beauty of entrepreneurship. And this podcast, and in fact, a lot of businesses that Shannon and I have had, started out really small. And then we wound up using things like Shopify, finding the right partners and making it work. And Shopify is one of those right partners. And I love how Shopify makes it easy for anyone to successfully run their own business. And it's not just us. Shopify powers millions of entrepreneurs from first sale to full scale. Every 28 seconds, that sound happens. You want to know why? A new small business owner makes their first sale on Shopify. And the next one can be you. Plus, with 24-7 support, you're never alone. More than a store, Shopify grows with you. Go to shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Start selling on Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash SBS right now, shopify.com slash SBS, and our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. Next up is I Trust Capital. Look, by now, we've all heard about cryptocurrencies, right? You might already even be investing in them. But did you know that you can invest in cryptocurrencies through your retirement account? I wish I knew this years ago. That's right, because with iTrust Capital, you can buy and sell crypto from a crypto IRA and get all the same tax advantages as a traditional IRA. iTrust Capital allows you to invest in over two dozen of the most popular cryptocurrencies and Unlike the stock market, you can buy and sell 24 hours a day. The iTrust Capital platform is easy to use, and it only takes a few minutes to create your account. Setting up an IRA is free, and iTrust has no account opening fees and no monthly fees. It's time to start taking control of your financial future. With iTrust Capital, you can get all the tax benefits of a retirement account while investing in crypto. Sign up today and receive a $100 funding bonus when you open and fund an account. Visit itrustcapital.com to start investing today. That's itrustcapital.com. Taxes and conditions apply. Fees apply. Cryptocurrencies are a speculative investment with risk of loss. Itrust Capital Inc. does not provide legal investment or tax advice. Consult with a qualified legal investment or tax professional. And our thanks to Itrust Capital for sponsoring this episode. All right. So we talked about financing in both a general sense and a very specific sense for our personal lives earlier in this episode. Now let's talk a little bit about how to finance anything or really how to fund our businesses, right? Because it, it, as we were saying earlier, you, you're you're investing in order to get that investment paid off and then some, right? So it takes money to make money and this is going to happen all the way through your business at the beginning, in the middle. Maybe maybe it's the thing that ends your business. I don't know, you know, right, but right. but it's yeah. going to be a thing that keeps going all the way through. And I think it's an important topic to talk about, Shannon. So uh, I do, too. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm not a huge fan of uh, of the topic in general because I hate being in debt at all. And I hate 
uh, I don't want to say hate, <laughs> but I don't like uh, hanging out with bankers or people that control the money sometimes. Yeah. And, uh, but I've been very fortunate to have some great uh uh, relationship managers at banks and stuff. And uh, I want to talk about the difference between a relationship manager and um, who really makes the decisions here in a little bit. But, you know, it, the first thing is I can remember, you know, when we were, I, I have companies get going and they're kicking off cash. And I just, I would just think, well, I, you know, why do we need to borrow any money or why, or why do we need to have that kind of relationship, a lending relationship? And now I know why. Because mm. sometimes, you know, your cash flow or sometimes, th well, not sometimes, all the time, things change, the economy changes and, you know, going through a couple of downturns oh, that, yeah. like we have will change a lot. And having and learning that asking for money when things are bad is, is the absolute worst time. Um, so, th th you know, it doesn't matter whether you're just getting started or you've been in business for a while you need to have that some business credit, right. And getting it established, it really can help you in the future. And, you know, when things go wrong, it also helps really to build credibility for your business. Right. Um, yeah. It's not, it, yeah. It's not know. just credit. It's credibility. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's yeah. good. I like that. And, and it also helps you leverage up r relationships. If you've, you know, meet somebody at a different bank or financial, you know, company down the road and they start asking questions, you can say, Oh, well, you know, I've got a, half a million or a million dollar line of credit with X. Well, that's a vote of confidence in your business, right? Yeah. And, and they're going to be much more likely to want to take that business, perhaps at offering you better terms and bring your relationship over to their business. But, you know, so you're, you're not starting out from scratch. So uh, I think it's a very important thing to do. Uh, I wouldn't suggest you go out and borrow a bunch of money, but we're going to talk about different kinds of, uh, you know, financial products here uh, as we go along, but you need to have that relationship with a bank or somebody that uh, you can count on in the future and that can add credibility to your business. Yeah. And you can start, I, I would say, I hate to use the term should, but it, I think it is a good idea. And I have learned to start that relationship early. Uh, I mean, I remember when I went and got my first business banking account, and I couldn't get out of the bank fast enough, right? I didn't want I them. Well, I was feeling imposter syndrome is probably the right way to describe it. I, I don't know that I would have called it that, that at the time. I mean, I was a, a you know brand new business owner. I, I literally was an imposter, you know, <laughs> but, uh, yes. you know, all I, I didn't want them to catch on to the fact that my business wasn't quite a real business yet and might never be. And so I went in and I, you know, filled out as many forms as I could ahead of time. There was no online at that point for banking. I had to do it in person. And, you know, I had gotten my DBA and like the things that were I thought were necessary. And it turned out I had enough. And obviously, as anybody who's gone to get a business banking account uh, would tell you, it's as long as you aren't missing key paperwork, it's relatively easy in the bank generally wants to give you that account. You know, it's they, yeah, they're, they're, they're in the money. business of, of managing your money or at least holding on to yes. your money. And so they want your money. And if you show up even with, I remember it was 20 bucks. I, I took a $20 bill out of my pocket and I, I gave it to him and that's what started the account. But, um, but I did not work. I was not working the relationship part of it during that. I was just yeah. trying to get the account done and get out of there before anybody figured out that they shouldn't give me a bank account. <laughs> yeah, and that's good. But that that's a great way to start, you know? I, I guess. I mean, I, I should. I and, of course, over the years, I did develop a relationship with my banker. And your banker will almost certainly change as time progresses oh, yeah. because people oh, get yes. new jobs and all of that stuff. And so you need to, uh, you know, you need to maintain that relationship and while it should be on your banker to do that, if they aren't doing it, it's up to you either to seek out your banker at your current bank or find a different bank where they are interested in in engaging with the relationship with you. But either way, you need to make sure you have a good rapport at these days. You should be able to email your business banker and have them reply within a couple of days. Uh, you know, certainly for non-urgent stuff, but test out the waters, ask a, ask a question, you know, what would it be like to get 
this or, you know, what would, if you already have a line of credit, what, what would the process be like to in, increase it? I don't know that we need to, but, you know, just some litmus test to see how they reply to you because you want them to remember you so that the day when the day comes that you need them, they don't feel like you're just showing up only when you need them. Yeah, I, I literally like that concept of, you know, if you go in and you're just getting started opening up your uh, a business bank account, whether for the first business or maybe it's another business, um, you know, it, going in the bank is great. Open it. Most of them you can do online now, but walking in is great and asking either online or in the in a, a branch for areas that still have them. We don't have a lot out here anymore. Yeah. Um, is say, hey, you know, can you have somebody call me from your business department Cause, and see if that happens? Cause and should. see if it happens. Uh, yeah. yeah, see if it happens. And then, you know, it'll be another another test. Uh, and, uh, you know, you, you want you want to be paid attention to. You want to feel like the customer because you are the customer. You don't want to have that banking relationship where you feel like, oh, I don't want to go ask them or or whatever. You're of a, a important commodity for them. Um, and, you know, these banks need you, of course, right? Yeah. And uh, so I, I think that you, so you, you, you've got this banking uh, relationship established. You put some money in the bank, so they're you know maybe making a little bit of money off of you, and then you can start asking yourself like, okay, uh, do I have a banking, you know, a relationship person? Very important. Somebody's called you. You've reached out. You got somebody talking to you, and you need to ask yourself how how much money do you need, you know, what do you need to get started? And if it's a brand new company, maybe it's just a minuscule little line of credit. Maybe it's $25,000, right? Maybe it's some small thing. Sure. Um, or even less, but something just to get started, yeah. uh, to build the rapport with the bank, see how things work. Cause you may hate the way they handle things. Right. Um, I, I, you know, I can remember banks that, used to sit on the money. I would try to do wire transfers at like noon and they would say, Oh, it's going to take a day or so. I was like, what, you know, that we need that money out like right now. Um, and I've, I've changed banks because they just haven't acted uh, fast enough. So all those little things. And I, I think you, as far as like how much you, th you need, only you can answer that question, right? It depends on your business. Are you a service provider or do you sell products? Are you a reseller? Uh, do you need to stock a ton of inventory? So you may need to do. I always, I always ask for, if, if you don't know the answer to that question, I always ask for 50 K that's, that's a great okay. place to start. It's not a ton of money on a line of credit, right? You know, but, um, I don't, I don't know that that's, that's always, it's a, I found it yeah. to be a good litmus test because it, sure. it, it'll tell you if your banker. I mean, they'll immediately look at your account and say, OK, right. like either that's realistic or they'll ask you, why do you think that's realistic? And and a fine answer to that is to tell them it's just a starting point. You know, let's look at this together. You tell me what you think is realistic and and we'll have a conversation, you know, and now you're getting to know this person and you're lending some trust to the equation, which is never a bad thing. So. Yeah, yeah. And all they can do is say no That's or it. offer you less, right? That, that, you, yeah. Okay, well. They shouldn't. If they say no without a reason, well, then go find another bank. If they say no yes. and they, they tell you, well, it's because, you know, dude, like, you know, you've been losing yeah. money for, you know, 14 right. quarters here. Like, well, <laughs> we, we can't really well, get yeah, involved it, in that. You know, you, you don't pay your stuff on time. Like, you know, whatever. Like, OK, great. Yes. Like, you know. I'm a big fan of asking for a roadmap after if if you go to a banking or whatever online or whoever you're talking to yeah. and ask for something and they say no, ask them, can you give me a roadmap? What steps do I need to take? What, uh, you know, measurements do I need to achieve? What goals do I need to set so I can come back to you and say, okay, I did all these things. Look, we're, we're achieving these things. Now I would like to ask again. Um, if you think, you know, you're in a position that we're like, well, I want to stay with this bank. Uh, you know, want to, you want to try to make things work, ask them for a roadmap. If they won't give it to you, then I would say you need to leave. Yeah. That's a great, I love that idea. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's like sales 101, right? Yeah. You, you tell me what your objections are yes, and, and let exactly. me take them away. Right. And, and, yeah. and yeah. that's that, that force, it doesn't force people to do anything. People can always still say no, but people feel yeah. obligated to say yes if they've told you what the objection is and you are able to take it away, like absolutely, it, it's a good, yeah. it's a good tactic. <laughs> 
and, and, it, and it helps you find out what the future is going to be like with this bank. Because as I mentioned earlier, so you're going to have a relationship manager. This person is going to take you to lunch, yeah. give you tickets to a you know, football game or whatever as your business grows and they start throwing perks at you, hopefully. Um, it, they're not the ones that are ultimately going to make the decisions about your account. Now, they're going to be your champion, hopefully. Right. And they're going to be, you know, hey, this is why I think we should do this, yada, yada, yada. But most banks... You know, it's always some unknown black box committee uh, or some algorithm in many cases now that's going to make a decision. And, you know, so asking for that roadmap from your banker, you know, your relationship person who I would say should be on your board of advisors, you know, ask the person, hey, can you would you mind? Yeah. You know, informally being on this board of advisors with my attorney, my insurance company, you know, whatever insurance guy. And you take these people to lunch or invite them over for an event and pick their brains and get their feedback. You're going to build a strong relationship with them. Um, they should be able to lay that roadmap out for you. And if if they do and you meet those, uh, whatever those benchmarks are, and they still won't give you what you want, then you got to look elsewhere. Yeah, I, I would, I would, I've never, with my banker specifically, accountant and, you know, your CPA and your, your attorney, I've always felt comfortable telling them, you know, or asking, would you be on my board of advisors, right? Unofficially or, you know, whatever. But with, and I guess I've done this with them too, but certainly with my banker, what I do is tell them, instead of asking their permission, I tell them after I've gotten to know them, even just a little bit, I consider you to be one of the people on my board of advisors. And that, I've just found that to be a much more inviting way and in a much less committing way to, you know, you're not asking them for some commitment that you're not implying that they need to make some commitment to you, right? They're already there. Yeah. It, you're already doing it. So you don't have to change anything about what you do, but I wanted to let you know, you're, you're on my board of advisors, you know, you're That's someone I look to up it. to. Right. And I like, I like that. It, it's, it's just a softer way of, of communicating that. And I've, I, I've never tried it the other way with a banker. So I can't tell you that it's actually better. But it feels better. So that's well, and it's complimentary. It is. Com that's well. exactly it. It's a compliment. Yeah, Correct. That's really nice. I think that's a, a great way to do it. I, I, I love that idea. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that, you know, you also need to understand that that banking person you have is not going to be the same forever. You're either going to go to another bank at some point or they're going to get another job. That's they're it. Gonna, the, yeah. They're going to they're going to move around either within the, the corporation or the bank or they're going to go to another job somewhere else. And you're going to have to bring somebody else along and I've left banks after losing uh you know relationship people when they put new people on our account that I just I just couldn't oh for uh, sure connect with yeah like, for oh, sure gonna, let's go let's go find another bank yep. um but but let, let's talk real quick too about the type of money and I think the the key word for me is access you you're going to need access to capital you don't need to have it all right away if you can get a credit line that's going to be better than a loan. If, if in most cases, give you, yeah, in most cases, if you need a about, sizable chunk of cash it, to spend yeah. right away, your interest rate on a loan is probably going to be better than your interest rate on a line of credit. But yes. it, I mean, it's Correct. worth knowing the answers to those. So, and yeah. for, for those of you who don't know, a line of credit is exactly what Shannon means when he says access, the bank has carved out access to this kind of like your credit card, right? You have access to credit there, but if you're not using it, you're not paying for it. Uh, and, and so it, it, it is that, in fact, oftentimes a line of credit will come with both a checkbook and a credit card to use against, you know, to tap in to that line. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And so, you know, the, the line of credit isn't going to cost you to, I mean, there's some origination fees and of course, sure. because they're going to want to make some money up front. Uh, this, they're usually pretty small, but you're only going to pay what you tap into, right? Uh, so if you need to borrow fifty thousand dollars, well, you're paying interest on that fifty until you pay it back down to zero. Um, I, I I think they're great if you do need to get if all they'll give you is a term loan. No, oh, hey, we're going to help your business. I'm a big fan of of taking that money out of their bank, even if you don't need it, put it somewhere else, put it in a different bank yep. uh, per, per chance, and then pay it back as, as soon as you can, maybe, you know, in a few months and say, oh yeah, hey, I used it, you know, and I'm, I'm paying it back. Just makes you help build up that relationship. You look stronger. Then maybe you can ask them for a line of credit. Um, 
I think it's it's important. And I've had them my whole life. There's different ways to get them. Um, you can all, and I mentioned on the last episode when we talked about start, or maybe it was the episode before, um, you know, when you don't have a lot of business assets, if you're, you know, if you, you can take and get a home equity line of credit, I've done this, you know, many times during my career. Sounds risky, but it's really not, in my opinion, yep. as long as you believe in yourself and, uh, you know, you don't mind a little bit of risk. I, I wouldn't drain all the equity in your house. And typically the bank is not going to let you do that anyway. Um, but uh, those loans are, are very inexpensive. More than likely, even if you get a direct business line of credit from your bank, they're going to make you sign a personal guarantee anyway. So that's almost the same as putting, you know, uh, that, that equity in your house up for risk. So look into that. Um, we talk about credit cards here on the show all the time. If you're just getting started and, you know, uh, you, you want to borrow, you need access to cat or, you know, purchasing power, credit cards are just a great way to do it. Um, we'll put a couple links in the show, uh, notes, that uh, will list some cards that you might want to look at. Um, one of the most if, important things. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say with credit cards, there are two types of credit cards I would recommend being aware of. One okay. is the credit card that you are planning to use almost as cash, just the, the convenient form of cash, meaning you're going to pay it off every month, right? And and you're just using it a as I said, for convenience, but B, those are the ones that you want to use as your rewards cards, right? The key to the charmed life, all of those, yes. you know, your hotel points, your airline points, your cash back, whatever rewards make sense for you, your life, your business, whatever that is, those uh, would be the ones to use as effectively cash replacements because they generally, rewards cards generally have much higher interest rates than non-rewards yes. cards. So yeah, that's right. The other type of credit card to have is the the one that that it becomes more like a line of credit. If you are going to tap in and and finance something, you know, even just for six months or whatever, maybe put that on a non rewards credit card with a much lower interest rate, so that you're not just paying for no good reason. So uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's that's important. One thing that. Is very has been important for me too. Uh, if you're just getting started out, you don't have a, you get a card, let's say that doesn't have a very high limit. Well, before you apply for or accept any pre-approved card, you want to be sure that they offer interstatement payments because that allows you to turn a credit card with a ten thousand dollar limit into a credit card with a hundred thousand dollar limit, right? Because are there cards that don't let you? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's how they limit. That's how they limit it and uh, allowing, because it's just one of the tricks. They may say, oh, you can make a payment every five days. You can make, some of them don't allow it at all. So you just, you know, you want to be sure that those interstatement payments you want to go to make them every 24 hours because if you're going to put 10 grand down and you have money coming into your business, you want to pay that off so you can go borrow 10, you know, use it again and again and again, get those, you know, affinity points that we're talking about, the charmed life stuff that, you know, uh, we've discussed at length at this show, yeah. but just get, get you access to more money. If you have to wait a month or they won't apply it, you know, well, that's, that's not a good card to get because it's just not as useful for you. Yeah. And I, yeah. I can remember when I was just getting started out, bank, you know, they, they weren't interested in loaning me any money. I had a banking relationship. They're like, well, you need some time, you know, and, and uh, some history on your account before we can talk about that. And I met uh, a, a guy in similar business of mine. And I went out at the time, I was flying around buying, you know, stuff from auctions and, uh, you know, uh, tech equipment. And, uh, it, it was Apple was horribly inefficient at that time. And sure. It made for great purchases all over the country. And I remember this guy, his name was Jay. And he said, Hey, I'll meet you. We're going to Texas. Come out, fly out. And I'll show you how you can get a $400,000 line of credit, you know, within 30 days with, you know, no history. I'm like, okay, great. And I got there and he tossed a, about a two inch stack of credit cards. at oh. me, And he's, Here's your four hundred thousand dollar line of credit. Let me show you how it works. And he, you know, he was the one that taught me also about the points and how that 
is was like hidden income and you know for your travel and family and uh, I don't doesn't matter you could get Home Depot cards or whatever your whatever yeah whatever you know, makes you sense want. for your business yeah yeah for your business and uh, I, that's what I did I went out and got a bunch of credit cards that you know were allowed that interstatement payments he's the one to taught me about that you know, got a couple of Amex, different Amex cards. And, and at the time, I can remember, he's like, well, you get one for yourself and then make sure you go get one for your wife. So if you got a $20,000, you know, line of credit on one card, well, maybe she's going to get another 20,000. So you got $40,000 to spend. You know, of course, you, you, your business has to have the revenue to pay it off. These are cards that I would pay off every month. Yes. You know, no, right, no right. interest. We're not, yeah, high we're interest not carrying. cards. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, these are cards with 25, you know, 28% interest that you do not, cannot, you know, carry debt on them, but they're great vehicles for short term. Uh, and, you know, th they worked out great and really made a big difference in, uh, you know, in my business life for sure. Hmm. Um, Interesting. You know, yeah, I, never, I, yeah, I don't think I've ever, I know that I've never knowingly run into a card that, that blocks interstatement payments, Uh I, because I, I mean, I do it with our cards all the time. So yeah, I, I didn't even know that that was a thing. Cards. Yeah. Lots oh. of cash back cards do it because they want to control, they, they've realized the game. And so they say, well, you know, we're only going to allow you to make a payment every five days. Yeah. Uh, one I know that still does it is like the Sam's club. Uh, they have a cash back, you know, up, uh, I think it's 2%. They cat, you can own, you can spend a million dollars a year, right? Is yep. their whole thing. And they only let you make a payment like every five days. So it limits how much cash you're going to be able to get back. Um, and so just, you know, they all have different terms. You just need to look at it and, and see what, what fits for you. Yeah. I've mentioned the Amex, the plum card. Was, yep. I love this card because there's no limit. It's just built on your, your personal and business uh, finances and your assets. And they look at it. You give them access to your, to your, you know, your bank statements and your, your uh, financials. And uh, I mean, the sky's the limit on this card and you can make a decision. You can carry 60 days, no interest, or you can take, uh, now I think it's only one and a half percent cash huh. back if you yeah, pay, pay right. within 30 days. Right, right. My, when we did it, it was 2%. I, th I still think we're grandfathered in at 2%. Two, 2%. So huh. nice. just a great card if you need two months to carry uh, interest free for inventory. I'm an inventory buyer. So yeah, right. I right. Yeah. No, it makes yeah. a difference. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So. Yeah, and then you know, I also think there's lots of alternative way, alternative companies out there that will loan you money. Places like PayPal, big business loans. Uh, if you're an eBay seller, they'll loan you money. Um, Cabbage is another one that will loan you cash. Uh, I think they're great, but and they're and they they work for some people. But you really got to look at the fees. You know, some of these alternative fundings charge interest up that uh, I just looked at it this morning up to 78% APR, right? Oh, that's crazy. Which I thought was, which I thought was illegal, but I guess not. Um, I mean, I, so I, you I guess look, anything is legal if, I if they, if, if they disclose it. it, if you agree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And well, I mean, not anything, but you know, an interest, right, right. any interest rate, let me <laughs> be, yes. be clear about now, that. Yeah. yeah. Short term, if you needed to go to one of these places, you know, okay. Uh, but, you're you're much better off with you know the bank and maybe with cards and maybe you know uh, you just got to think about yeah um, to look at and see you know the SBA is another alternative to talk about you know if if you can't get a line of credit but you want to do something SBA you know can help the bank feel more comfortable if you're buying equipment or you know uh, something that, that SBA stuff they like to back things up with assets but uh, it is you know really good i just think the some of these alternatives really should be your last result uh last resort because they can just be so darn expensive and you, you got to be careful yeah you know um some of them do you know daily credit card skim like paypal does it where they'll basically loan you money it's it's not too crazy expensive but every dollar you bring in, if they're your merchant processor, they're going to skim off your pay, your daily a, a, a percentage every single day. So they're going to get their cash back faster. Um, you know, that makes and, sense. It, okay. Yeah. yeah. And there's a bunch of them that'll, that'll do that. And that, that's one way to help mitigate those costs if you have it. Um, 
equipment financing. There's tons of companies that specialize just in that. Really? And it, it's pretty... I guess yeah, that makes sense. Why not? Yeah, because it's, yeah. In, a, in a sense, it is sec a secured loan or could be a secured loan if it's being used to buy equipment. Just like a car loan yeah. is secured with your car, you know, that kind of That's thing. That's right. That's yep. right. Yeah. And whether you're going to lease it or buy it, I love leasing because you can typically write off an expense... Uh, the full value of that thing every month with that lease payment. However, especially in the last few years, there's been lots of incentives to purchase uh, trying to government, trying to spur the economy. So yeah. ask your accountant um, or the, anybody you're involved with equipment purchasing, are there any, you know, what state and federal incentives are there for buying things right now? Um, I know during COVID you could expense, oh, yeah. I think uh, almost like a hundred percent of, up to a certain amount. So buying equipment would have been a great time to, yeah, uh, to se buy. Section 179 got really nice and loose during COVID, yeah. <laughs> which is great. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, I love se leasing. Section 179 you know, is the, is the thing that the code, the section of the IRS code that allows you to write off the entirety of a purchase that you would otherwise, or a, a good chunk, often the entirety of a purchase that you would otherwise have to depreciate over, you know, five years, seven years, whatever that, whatever it might be for that particular asset. And uh, mm. so, yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah. And, and if there's lots of crazy things too, like the weight of whatever you're buying. So if you're buying trucks, for, let's say for your company or for yourself that you're going to use for your business, do you may get a better uh, incentive if you can buy a truck over a certain weight, let's say, for example. So they really are uh, huh. worth looking into. I, I often discounted them, but then I, I did, you know, learned the hard way that, oh, we, we could have taken this kind of yeah. incentives off when we bought I, some stuff. I remember a friend of mine bought a, his accountant told him like in December one year, uh, you need to go buy a Suburban for your family. And he's like, yeah. well, I, I want to, he's like, but uh, like, that's crazy. He says, yeah, it would be great for like shuttling my kids off to hockey games and all this stuff. He's like, but I don't think so. And his account was like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Suburbans way more than whatever the, yes. the number is. So you get a whole different tax break because of the weight of that vehicle, even though you and I know you're going to use it, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yep. exactly. So, um, and then lastly, th there's, if you're a purchase order type of company where uh, you're getting POs from, let's say, larger businesses or distributors for your products, um, lots of places will finance that PO for you. Uh, and they typically will give you 80 or 90% of the value of that PO. So if you needed to go buy equipment or whatever to service an account, and, and it could be even just a purchase order for a service business too. Sure. Um, your, your bank is, they love that stuff because it's, it's somewhat secure, especially if it's for a fortune 1000 business that's giving you that PO or something. I mean, you see, you ever watch Shark Tank and they're like, Oh, I got a PO from, you know, Walmart for X number of units. They love that stuff. Right. Um, and your bank, your bank loves it too. So don't, don't forget about that vehicle. Um, and we'll put, we'll put a link in the show notes for uh, a place you can learn a little bit more about that uh, PO financing. So I like it. There's, like it. there's always somewhere to find the money. I always used to tell our purchasing guys, always take the deal and I will find the money. If the deal is in a, from a buying standpoint, and the inventory side of things, if uh, if the deal is good enough, someone will finance it for you if you can't do it yourself. So uh, I, I always put the money second. You know, once I and I had lines of credit and all that kind of stuff set up, so I had, you know you have a good foundation. But you know, let's say you have a four hundred thousand dollar line of credit and you have a million dollar deal. Well, if the deal is good enough, you want to go sit down, talk to your bank, and say, look, look at this opportunity here. You can secure your loan from the assets increase my credit line or give me a term short term loan you know 180 days or 12 months for this project that, that stuff is great and and you want bankers that'll be uh, uh, open to that kind of creative stuff I, I, I we always did really well that way so. huh. yeah no that's a good way I mean the, the businesses the types of businesses that you've run you you need to assume that you're going to be able to buy the inventory that you plan to sell. Right. I mean, like, so yeah. that yeah. mindset of we'll find the money is a, is a smart one in those businesses because it like without being able to buy that inventory, it like, it doesn't matter how good you are at, 
at selling or how great your network is at, at having buyers ready. Like it's like it's all irrelevant if you can't buy the whatever the, the thing is that you're going to sell in the first place. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, oh. yeah. So, you know, uh, tell us what we've missed. We talked about a bunch of different, uh, you know, vehicles here to find money. Um, you know, we didn't really talk much about financing from friends and family. Uh, I always, I've done that, but it really makes me nervous. Um, I only did it when I was real young. The only thing I would tell you about that is just like having a working agreement uh, to start a potential partnership or joint venture, you need to have it documented with whoever's going to loan you the money. So yeah. everybody agrees on what the terms are. Very, and, very important. And even then, <laughs> I don't recommend it unless it like I would treat it as a last resort. Um, yeah. 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 <sighs> I sleep better at night knowing I never owed any friends or family money. That's the I key. Really yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah, it it. It changes the relationship. I mean, it's like hiring a friend or going to work for a friend or anything like that. Y you are forever changing the dynamic. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to ruin the dynamic. Like that, no, that no. is one type Agreed. of change. Yeah. It might make yes. the relationship better. Like you, you, you might get into business in, in whatever way, working for, having them work for you, borrowing money from a friend that you only see or talk to once every couple of months. Right. And now suddenly you're yeah. talking every day and you might really like that. Like it could really work out, but it will almost certainly change that dynamic and be ready for that. Like you, you need to yeah. know that, that if you sit down and say, we know that this won't change our friendship, you know, we're thick, we're blood <laughs> brothers. True. Nope. It's going to change it. Not true. Yep. Yeah. And, and you need to come up with, um, a, a, you know, especially if you're hiring a friend or a friend is hiring you come up with a, what does it look like when one of us terminates the working relationship? Like how, how is it important to us to preserve the friendship past that? And I know we're beyond financing here, but I, I've, I've done this and I've successfully done this, but it, it does change the friendship, even, yeah, you know, okay. even if the friendship survives the termination of the working relationship, it's still it, like th that history is now part of your friendship. And yeah, you know, yeah. you, you got to be able to, you got to be able to deal with that. So yeah. think about it. Yeah. yeah. So share your stories. Tell us what's worked for you. What hasn't feedback at business .co, or uh, come over and bring your business brain with you to businessshow.co slash Facebook and share your stories online. Love we've, to hear from you. We've said business brain a lot in this episode, Shannon. I, I like that term. Uh, folks, let us know. Feed, feedback at businessshow.co or in the Facebook group. Let us know what you think about that term. Also, check out our sponsors, shopify.com slash SBS, itrustcapital.com. And hey, uh, do me a favor. Keep living that charmed life, huh? See you next week.